So the first way that we would do that is through the menu system in Stata if we wanted to do it that way. And so where we would go in the menu system is up to the statistics menu and then summaries, tables and tests, across to frequency tables and across to two-way table with measures of association. Once we click on that, then we get this other menu that comes up. We just need to tell Stata what our variables are. So our row variable, remember that that's the independent variable if you do have a distinction between an IV and a DV. So here that's our condition variable. Our column variable is your dependent variable. So here this is our final problem variable. And we want to tick the Pearson's chi-square box there because that actually gives us the chi-square test statistic. And if we wanted those extra pieces of information in that frequency table, in the two-way frequency table, then we could tick that on the right-hand side under cell contents as well. So within row relative frequency gives us the row frequencies and the expected frequencies gave us those expected counts. You don't have to tick those two things. If you only just want the um, Pearson's chi-square, then all you need to do is to select the Pearson's chi-square box. If we were to do the same thing but through syntax, then this would be how we could do it. We'd use the tab or tabulate command, specify our independent variable and then our dependent variable, comma, row and expected just give us those extra pieces of information in that frequency table itself. But the important thing is CHI2, which is our chi-square value. And that's just specifying to actually get data to give us the chi-square test statistic and its associated p-value. So this is what we get when we run that particular command. You can see it looks a little bit different to the correlations or to the t-test commands in that we get only one little bit of information down the bottom here, the Pearson's chi-square with degrees of freedom in parentheses after the chi-square equals the chi-square value and then PR stands for probability and that's our p-value. And remember that p-values can never actually equal zero. It's only rounded to three decimal places here, which is representing it as zero because that is rounding it to three decimal places. But remember that it doesn't mean that the p-value is actually zero. It just means it's a very, very, very small number. So it's rounded to zero to three decimal places. So what this is telling us, if we look at this actual statistical test, is that we've got quite a large Pearson's chi-square test, a value of 30.22. We've got a very, very small p-value that goes along with that. And therefore, because our p-value is less than 0.05, we can reject our null hypothesis. The null hypothesis meaning no association between the two variables. So Pearson's chi-square test statistic of 30.22 has an associated probability of obtaining that test statistic if the null hypothesis of no association between the variables was true of very, very, very small probability and therefore we can deem this sufficiently unlikely to have obtained this test statistic if the null hypothesis is true, and therefore we can conclude that there probably is an association between the variables in the population from which the sample was drawn. So there's a significant association between condition and whether somebody received the bonus. And if we wanted to write that up in terms of a more formal conclusion, then we could do that a couple of different ways. So the first thing I've said here is that there is a significant association between reminder condition and whether individuals receive the bonus. And the APA way of writing up our chi-square test statistic here is using the chi-square value. And then in parentheses, we have our degrees of freedom first, which here is one, comma, our sample size represented by big N equals 305. And then writing out the actual chi-square test statistic itself, 30.22 and then the associated p-value, p is less than 0 0.001. So that's saying that there's a significant association between the variables, but what that sentence isn't saying is what direction the association is in, i.e. are you more likely to receive the bonus if you're in the no reminder condition or the yes reminder condition? And so more, more importantly or more helpfully, the next sentence goes on to kind of explain or interpret those results. So individuals who receive the reminder through association had a higher chance of receiving the bonus. And then I've put in parentheses the percentage of people in the forced reminder through condition, through association condition, who did receive the bonus, 87%. So individuals who received the reminder through association had a higher chance of receiving the bonus, 87%, compared to individuals who received no reminder. 
and their chance of receiving the bonus was 59%. So the percentage of people in the no reminder condition who did receive the bonus was 59%. And therefore receiving the reminder increased individuals' chance of receiving the bonus. So that's just kind of a, a more, in, more important or a more useful interpretation beyond just the first sentence. The first sentence there said that there was a significant association, which is technically what the chi-square test is doing. But if we want to interpret or explain the association, we need to talk about what direction that association is going into. So that's our conclusion. Um, if we're thinking about trying to interpret how big that effect is, then we know that measures of effect size are really useful to make that kind of interpretation. How big an effect did condition have on people's chance of receiving the bonus? And one way of doing that is using the numbers that I've already represented or already included as part of this conclusion. So I said that people who are in the forced reminder through association condition had an 87% chance of receiving the bonus whereas people in the no reminder condition had a 59% chance of receiving the bonus. And the difference between those two percentages or those two chances of receiving the bonus is one measure of effect size. How much different 87 is to 59 is one way of representing how big the effect of condition is on receiving the bonus, on your chance or likelihood of receiving the bonus. Next week, I'll be talking about some more formal measures of effect size for categorical data, but that's one way we can get at this stage of representing how big that difference is, but more formal things to come next week. Okay, the next second last slide here is just a summary of the status syntax we've used today. So the two-way frequency table, our contingency table is the first one there, which is using the tab or the tabulate command. There was also the clustered bar chart, which is just a way of representing the same data that come into that two-way frequency table. And then getting the chi-square test, the actual chi-square, Pearson's chi-square test of independence um, as an extra bit of output from that frequency table itself is the last row there. So conclusions about what we've talked about today. We've talked about categorical data, obviously, um, and we've talked about how we need to think about categorical data in terms of your likelihood of falling into a certain category or how many people are in each observation or each set of observations, each category or each group. And that's just a different kind of way of thinking to thinking about differences in mean scores between groups. We started off with the chi-square goodness of fit test, and that was the test for looking at a single categorical variable and looking specifically at the proportion of observations across each of those categories and comparing that breakdown of proportions to some external known proportion, either some other population or just some expectation. And the example I gave you there was comparing students' test results to chance. And the next test that we did was the chi-square test of independence. And this is the test where we look at an association or a relationship between two categorical variables. So we're seeing whether category membership of an independent variable is related to the category membership of a dependent variable, or whether category membership of one variable is related to category membership of another variable. And category membership of the dependent variable can be conceptualized or expressed as the likelihood of one category happening or occurring compared to another. And in the, in, in the specific example that we talked about today for that particular test, it's the likelihood of getting the bonus compared to not getting the bonus. How likely individuals are to get the bonus if they were in the reminder condition versus the no reminder condition. So that's the end of chi-square tests. And as I said at the start of today, that's the last of the new statistical tests that we're learning this particular semester. So congratulations on getting through all of the different tests. Next week is more of a going over different kinds of examples and consolidating the individual pieces of information that we've learned so far. And then the week after that, are talking about some applications or some extensions. And then a final week in week 13. So it's not very long until we get to the end of the semester. So goodbye for today.